So a lot of people are going to think they have the right solution to this question, but in fact, they will not have the correct result. They will not have the right answer. What is the question? Well, it is uh, the following. A number squared plus one is 26. What is the number? Okay, so if you want to try this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the right answer in just one second. And then, of course, I'm going to walk through the solution uh, here step by step. Now, this is a very important kind of concept to understand. Well, I mean, in all levels of math, but especially if you are taking an algebra course if you or if you just want to learn algebra. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and see if in fact you did this right because the correct answer is positive and negative five. Now, if you have five as your answer, okay, I will give you, well, let's just kind of uh, define the solution here, right? Before I tell you what I'm going, what uh, grade you earn, uh, there are two um, uh, parts to this answer, okay? The solution is a positive five and a negative five, okay? So if you have five as your answer, I would say, good job, you're kind of on the right path but I have to give you only like half points, right? So in other words, uh, if uh, let's say this question was worth 100 points, uh, let's not make it, let's make it 10 points. Well, I would give you five out of 10 because you only got 50% of the answer, right? So five out of 10, that's 50%. That's not so good. You know, I don't want to give you an F, but you know, you might be saying to yourself, well, oh, come on, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you're kind of overdoing it. I got five. I was pretty right. Well, you were half right. Okay, you were definitely half right. So, you know, because I'm such a generous person, if you got five, I'll give you a little happy face and I'll give you a B. Okay, uh, typically, you know, I felt like maybe uh, I'll give you a B plus, B minus. Listen, good job. Okay, but really, the uh, technically correct, absolute right answer is positive and negative five, and there is a good reason why it's both positive and negative five, because this solution, uh, both of these numbers are the solution, not just one, okay? But if you got positive negative five, well, indeed, you certainly earned an A plus, a 100%, and multiple stars, so you could brag to your friends and family that indeed, you are a certified professional expert in the area of solving basic quadratic equations. Now, they won't even know what that means, but they'll be like, boy, this guy, you know, or this person, uh, they're going someplace in life. I better take them out to lunch because one day maybe they'll be able to get me a good paying job. All right. Well, all jokes aside, if you um, got five as your answer, OK, that's a good job, right? You kind of use some common sense or you were kind of, you know, reason through the problem. So nice work. And let's uh, kind of get into this problem on exactly why it's both positive and negative five. So I did indicate that what we're talking about here is a quadratic equation. But first things first, what we have to do is translate this sentence into a variable uh, expression or algebraic equation. So we have a number, right? So here's the problem. A number squared plus 1 is 26. So we want to translate this into an actual algebraic equation. So I have a number, right? So what's a number in algebra? Well, a number just represents uh, a, uh, well, a variable just represents a number. So if we don't, we have an unknown value, a number. Well, what number? Well, I don't know what number. Well, let's uh, kind of write a symbol um, down to represent that number, and we call those symbols variables. So it's a good idea um, when you can to use variables that represent kind of what you're looking for. So I'm going to use the variable n. Of course, you could use a variable x. It doesn't make a difference. But I'll use n to represent this number. Now here, OK, the rest of this, so a number, we'll use n to represent this number, plus 1. That's pretty easy to translate uh, into a mathematical uh, statement. Now, when you see the word is, anytime you see the word is in a uh, verbal sentence, that's always the equal sign. OK, so is equal to. 26. 
So a number squared plus one is equal to 26. So we can go ahead and actually write this as an equation, okay? So a number squared plus one is 26. We're gonna let n equal to that number. So our um, equation now is n squared plus one is equal to 26. Okay, so at this point, what we're dealing with uh, here is what we call a quadratic equation, a quadratic equation. Now, I know it sounds kind of, you know, very, you know, uh, complex and like, oh, quadratic equation. Those must be very scary. You know, don't be scared. You're like, oh, I don't want to do quadratic equations. They must be so complex. No, they're not. And this is kind of the stuff that you learn in basic first year algebra. Real quick, um, you know, it's important that we distinguish, uh, you know, this kind of goes to the solution here, that in algebra, okay, and I'm talking like first year algebra, you'll learn all different types of equations, okay? You learn things called linear equations. That's like your basic stuff, like 2x plus 1 is equal to 9. That's a linear equation. Then you get into uh, things like x squared plus 1 is equal to 10. This is a quadratic equation because here, a linear equation, the uh, variable, the highest power is 1. When we put a variable to a uh, power of 2, the highest power in that uh, equation, or the highest power of the variable in that equation is 2, uh, this is a quadratic equation. Now, I get more technical, uh, you know, if I really wanted to kind of, you know, speak like a textbook here, I would say, uh, second degree polynomial equations are quadratic equations, blah, 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 blah. Listen, uh, when you have uh, equations with you have a variable to second degree, more or less, that's a quadratic equation, okay? But there's all different sorts of equations in algebra. You have systems of equations, you have radical equations, uh, you have rational uh, uh, equations, um, and then you continue on, you'll learn things like exponential equations, logarithmic equations. So in other words, there is a gigantic universe of different type of equations in algebra, okay? And uh, the way you solve one type is different then you solve, uh, in other words, uh, each type of equation um, has its own methods and techniques, okay? So you have to be able to identify uh, equations, okay? Now, one thing which is very, very cool about uh, uh, quadratic equations and what we call polynomial equations is the following, okay? And if you can understand this, this is a, a tremendous uh, kind of upgrade into your, to your um, algebra knowledge, okay? So when you have an algebraic equation and you have, a, well, I'm going to say the, the, a polynomial equation, you don't need to know what that is, but you have the variable, its highest power, okay? So here, if the highest power in this equation, uh, the variable, the highest power is 2, that means there will be two solutions, okay? This is something called the fundamental theorem of algebra, the fundamental theorem of algebra. So... Uh, basically, it's a fancy theorem that just states that, hey, listen, when you have a polynomial equation, certain types of equations, and basically, again, things that you're going to deal with in Algebra 1, Algebra 2, College Algebra, Pre-Calculus, and the like. But anyways, the highest power tells you how many solutions you must have, okay? So that's why when we have an equation like this, if I have like 2x is equal to 10, well, how do I solve this equation? Well, super easy. I just divide both sides of the equation by 2 and x is equal to five, okay? How many solutions are to the equation two x is equal to 10? Just one, exactly one, that's five. That's the only solution we have because two x uh, is equal to 10 is what we call a linear equation. Its power, highest power is one, indicating there is exactly one solution only, okay? But in this type of equation, a quadratic equation, this must have two solutions, okay? so. Really, that's what uh, this whole you know purpose of this video is, is to see if you recognize that, in fact, this problem uh, was indeed a quadratic equation. Now, this is super easy to solve, and we're going to take this uh, take the steps to solve this problem right now. And uh, first things first, so we have n squared plus 1 is equal to 26. So when you're solving quadratic equations, there's all sorts of different techniques uh, to solve these uh, types of equations, but this particular type is very easy. And if you want to go ahead and see if you can try to solve this, uh, basically what you want to do is get your uh, n squared on one side of an equation and get your numbers on the other side. I'll show you that uh, precisely. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to ask you to precisely 
uh, find that uh, sub uh, subscribe button on your uh, phone or you know, your laptop, your computer, whatever the case is, and hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, make sure to hit that notification bell. This really does help me. It helps uh, me grow my virtual classroom. I am trying to reach as many people who are interested in math and more importantly, who are struggling in math or maybe people who, uh, you know, kind of wondered, hey, could I have... Uh, you know, taking calculus way back 20, 30, 40 years ago. I'm going to tell you right now, however you think about your math skills, okay, especially those of you that think that uh, you maybe you're not too good at math, you can learn a lot of math, okay? You know, certainly up to calculus. There gets to be a level of math. I mean, I have a degree in mathematics, a master's degree. There gets to be a pretty advanced level where, yes, indeed, even if you try your hardest and you got the grade, you know, yes, of course, if you're going to get a PhD in mathematics, that's difficult. But you can certainly get yourself up to um, at least calculus, okay, if, uh, through hard work and a lot of encouragement and great instruction. Anyways, by you subscribing, it definitely helps me out. Now back to the problem. Okay, so here is the equation, n squared plus 1 is equal to 26. So again, different techniques to solve quadratic equations. This particular one is very easy because we just have an n squared. We don't have something like n squared plus n uh, is equal to 26. That would be a different type of situation. So all we need to do here is get the n squared on one side of the equation and one number on the other side. And we can do that easily by subtracting one from both sides of the equation. Okay, so when we do that... We're going to add down in a column manner, so this is going to be n squared plus nothing is n squared. Uh, the 1s go away, and then we have 26 minus 1, which of course is 25. Now, a lot of you probably thought to yourself in your brain, okay, number squared, uh, that would be, have to be 25, so it would be 5 squared. So that was good thinking, okay, but, to, you know, but it wasn't 100% right, okay, uh, technically correct, and, and, you know, and really technically, there's a big, you know, difference between Oh, yeah, 5 works. 5 does work, but that is only half of the solution, okay? So to solve for n, when we have n squared is equal to 25, what we can do is take the square root of both sides, okay? So in other words, if I had the square root of n squared, it's n. If I had the square root of uh, 4 squared, which, of course, is 16, 4 squared is 16, it's 4. So you can kind of see the pattern here. So we can take the square root of n squared. That's just n. And the square root of 25 is positive negative 5. Now, here is a huge distinction that I must make, okay? And this is probably one of them. Uh, in my, you know, decades of experience, this is a very confused, um, you know, um, thing that I don't think a lot of math books do a great job in explaining. Okay, so let's just forget this problem here for a second. And let's suppose I said, uh, hey, uh, tell me what the square root of 25 is. Okay, all by itself, I just gave you this question right there. Now, would you give me the answer positive negative 5, or would you just give me 5? Okay, well, the correct answer is just 5. Okay, now, some of you might be like, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, you're confusing me. Well, you're telling me it's positive negative 5. Well, let me explain. Okay, so the square root of 25, what just as a simple question, when we're just looking for the value of this, okay, is what we call the principal square root. It's always just the positive version, okay, of whatever the square root is. And yeah, the square root of 16 by itself is 4. This is the principal square root. We're not going to put in this positive negative business, okay? Now, the reason why we put in, when we have the positive and negative situation is when we are dealing with square roots in an equation, Okay, like this, n squared is equal to 25. When you're taking a square root as part of a quadratic equation, then we do need to consider both the positive and negative roots. Okay, so that's when you want to put in this positive and negative if you're solving as a part of like a quadratic equation. All right, so now we're going to get n is equal to both positive and negative 5 because uh, positive 5 times positive 5 is 25 and negative 5 times negative 5 is also a positive 25. Okay, so that is a good solution. And we can just kind of verify this. So when we have n is equal to positive negative 5, this right here is two discrete solutions. This means, this is just shorthand in algebra, that this states that n is uh, positive 5 and n is also equal to negative 5. There's two solutions. But instead of writing it this way, we just typically use this positive negative notation like that. But this means there's two unique solutions. Okay. So, of course, we can solve or, or check these solutions in our original equation, right? So, a number squared plus 1 is 26. So, we plug in 5. 
um, just to kind of check this answer, 5 squared is 25. 25 plus 1, that is 26. 26 is equal to 26 is a true statement. Okay, so we're verifying the solution. So 5, caught, when we plug in 5 into the equation, caused the true statement. Therefore, 5 is a good solution. But uh, 5 is not the only solution. Okay, negative 5 is a solution as well. So negative 5 squared, okay, is positive 25 plus 1. 26 is equal to 26. So that works as well. So if you, uh, if, again, if you've got 5, you just even kind of use some common sense and reason through this problem. I mean, that's good. Okay, I congratulate you on that. And that's, you know, uh, you know, pretty good thinking. You know, matter of fact, it's very good thinking. But um, kind of the overarching, you know, point of this is that a lot of people think, oh, yeah, that's the final answer. I'm good to go. You know, but, you know, you kind of over, you know, um, uh, you kind of miss, you know, just kind of go through this problem thinking that, oh, I got it right. But, you know, in mathematics, there are these little, you know, technical things, which are, the, you know, the, there's that old saying, the doubles and the details. This is a big, big deal. Okay. So here's the thing, right? Anytime you see something being squared, a variable squared, you need to think quadratic equation. Therefore, you're going to be looking for two unique solutions. All right. Now, if you need help with uh, algebra, or if you want to learn algebra, you know, quadratic equations, I have a ton of additional videos on my YouTube channel. But, uh, you know, probably my, well, not probably, my best instruction on this will be in my main courses. You can find those links uh, in the description. Uh, probably for those of you that really want to get into quadratic equations, you'll need to start in my um, Algebra 1 course, okay? And quadratic equations are a big, big deal, not only in Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and even into pre-calculus. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.